Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. So today I am speaking with Carolyn Morke, an administrator and entrepreneur who currently lives in the state of Georgia, but is originally from my hometown of Buffalo, New York. I can't wait for you to hear from her because I know that you will be inspired by her story. Carolyn, welcome to the podcast and thank you for agreeing to talk to me today. How are you? I'm doing great and thank you for having me. I'm excited to be with you this morning. My pleasure, my pleasure. I wanted to just tell you that my intention for the Try Again with Monique podcast is really to encourage people to think about their lives a little bit differently and, you know, change course if necessary or try something new, especially if they don't like how things turned out, you know, the first time around. Today's topic, as you know, is personal success. And I want to know from you how you define it and how you've navigated, you know, various transitions in your own life. So, Let's start by you telling us about a moment in your life or in your career in which you had to recreate yourself or you had to try something new or something different. Talk to us a little bit about that transition and how it came about. Okay, so that is a great question. And as I give thought to my transitions, different things that I've tried um, and just something new, um, I kind of look back over my shoulder and I stop at last year. So about a year ago, my husband and I decided to launch our first e-commerce business and it's called More K African Connection. Now, it was a lot of thought and a lot of consideration that went into it because we both, of course, have our nine to five. So that means anytime you're going to enter into a transition such as having another business, your the rest of your day when you get off of work your evenings it's going to be dedicated to the success of that business especially if it's something that you're passionate about so sure my journey took us there for the first business so we launched the business um and it was and it is very successful um we are on you know selling on major platforms amazon ebay but it took a lot of work, a lot of thought, and then your finances that you definitely have to invest into the business and the business structure. Um, so with that, we just didn't stop there. So I am so excited that we are going to launch business number two on September the 10th. Awesome. Um, and that is, and that business is very near and dear to my heart because it pays homage to my mom who transitioned in 2017 to heaven. And okay. The way that I dealt with that transition and that pain was to look at the things that she and I were passionate about, invest in that, and BU was launched um, or was developed and will be launched on September the 10th, So, which is coming up next Saturday. I was going to say, uh, we've got a date coming up very soon. September the 10th is your launch date. Yes. Okay. That is yes. awesome. Awesome. Can you tell us what you, what you, you, you kind of started talking about what you've learned from that experience, but uh, give us some, uh, some takeaways. What did you learn from making that transition from, you know, really balancing a nine to five and doing your, uh, you know, pursuing your entrepreneurial endeavor at the same time, and then adding a second business uh, to, to your, to your resume. Uh, what did you learn from, from doing that? Okay, so I'm going to walk back for just a moment. Okay. The one thing that I'm going to say the major thing that I had to have is a foundation in Christ. Okay. One thing that my mom would always tell me, and it was her her favorite scripture, was that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yes. And so I had to find strength from somewhere. So it wasn't just within myself, right? Because we go through moments, especially of grief and sorrow, when you're dealing with one instance. And then the other instance is the stresses of having businesses and being in the midst of them, being in the midst of launching, being in the midst of development of those businesses. You have to draw strength from somewhere. Okay. So my foundation will be Christ. But I learned to celebrate small wins along the way. Um, You have to know that, you know, you're going to make mistakes, 
you will fail at different areas and parts of um, launching your businesses or even going into a new career. You know, you're going to have those moments where you will make mistakes where you will fail, but that's not the end of an entrepreneurial journey. That's not the end of the transition of a career, but it becomes a chance to gain new perspectives and to implement new ideals to make sure that you don't rehearse those mistakes and that you don't repeat them, but instead you learn learn from them and you move forward. Okay. And and then you also have to know that sometimes along the way of this journey, it's going to be lonely because you're so locked into accomplishing certain goals, your strategies, your visions, your dreams, that sometimes you have to walk alone. You have to be okay with that as well. It. Um, it won't last always, but mm-hmm. you will have those moments along the way where it's you, your business, your partners, and that's really, that becomes your focus in your life for that moment in time as you're developing um, your business or as you're transitioning careers. Sure. Those are great takeaways. Great takeaways. Um, I just started jotting some things down um, that you said, and you know, I mean, really, what you said can be applied to any situation where someone's trying something new or different. You know, you talked about a foundation from which you draw strength. Your foundation is in Christ, but you have to have a foundation from which you're drawing strength. Um, celebrate those small wins as you're going through, as you're building, as you're as as you're as you're going through the process. You know, be willing to walk alone uh, if you have to, especially when things get hard. You know, those in those moments, remember your goal, remember your vision, what you're trying to accomplish, but. Be be willing to walk alone and as you said be okay with that and I love I was thinking of what you were saying with the small wins and the processing process is slow and steady sp- pace came to my mind slow yeah. and, and steady pace you know yeah. um, you know sometimes you get big wins uh, mm-hmm. from going at, 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 at that at that pace and at that level that's great how do you define success okay so <laughs> uh, that's something big to think about but I think if I can be transparent, there are going to be moments in all of our lives where we feel successful and when we don't. And when you're looking for me, as I look at the definition of what I would consider successful or success, Mm -hmm. um, I think about have I think about accomplishments, um, accomplishing goals and movement. Okay. Now, you may have a big picture before you, and you may have the goal of a big picture um, that you want to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Just because you haven't accomplished it in a certain time frame doesn't mean you're not success- successful. I do feel that success um, is staying in motion, staying okay. in movement toward accomplishing those goals. Even in the midst of fear and trepidation, because they can coexist, but you're still in movement. You didn't pitch your tent in excuses. Okay. I feel like a lot of uh, the difference between people who are successful and the people who are not, Mm -hmm. um, they allow fear to cripple them and stop them. So they're no longer in movement. And when you're not in movement, you become stagnant and you're not even working towards your dreams or or accomplishing your strategies. But then we also give ourselves excuses um, for for those who are on their road to success. We want to be absent of excuses. I learned this definition when I first came to Georgia um, in 2004. And I was working for a nonprofit Mm -hmm. and they were short staffed. So it was just kind of high turnover, but I was steady there. And so they wanted us to do additional work. And I was like, you know, I can't stay all of these extra hours and all that. But one of the higher ups came to me and she was talking with me. And the one thing she said to me, she gave me this definition that I committed to memory and it kind of it guides me right now and it's a definition for excuses and and she said excuses are meaningless devices used to rationalize or justify the failure of a task and so as I got on this road I said I am going to be absent of excuses although what I'm saying could be true it could be factual but I'm going to be absent of that because I need to figure out how people who are successful, they figure out how to move through walls of resistance. They figure out how to get on the other side of the challenge to attain what it is they're trying to accomplish. And so I feel that successful people, there will be things that will coexist. There will be emotions that that will creep into play sometimes. Sure. But sure. you have to be able to navigate 
through that and always figuring out how to proceed through challenges and get to the other side. Um, so for me, um, that's just kind of how I guide my success and successful journey in all of this. That is so good. You said that so quickly. I, I started jotting down that definition you were given for excuses. I want to say that again and, and, and correct me if I say it in, incorrectly. <laughs> okay. But you said excuses. You were told are meaningless devices used to rationalize or justify the failure of a task. That yes. is so good. <laughs> that is so yeah. good. That is so good. It really uh, causes you to kind of think of your excuses, uh, the things that, you know, might be excuses in your life a little bit differently about that. Um, I love how you said, you know, fear is crippling. Uh, it is crippling. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's paralyzing. It causes you sometimes to freeze, you know, mm -hmm. and you said you've got to move toward your goal. I love that you said always be in motion toward the goal. Um, yeah. You didn't say you have to reach the goal to be mm -hmm. successful. You didn't define success as reaching the goal. You define it is moving toward the goal and always being in motion, you know, in, in a specific direction of where you're trying to go um, and, and not letting fear cripple you. I actually did a podcast not too long ago and, and the title of the episode was Do It Afraid because sometimes yeah. you just, the fear doesn't always leave. You have to do it afraid. If you, if you allow fear to stop you, you probably mm -hmm. won't accomplish very much in your yeah. life. But I like that you also added that um, excuses need to be looked at as well um, because mm -hmm. excuses like fear really can hinder you and cause you to kind of stand still as well and not move forward towards your goal. I love that definition of, of success. Do you consider yourself, Carolyn, successful? Why or why not? So I'll go back to how I started this. There are moments where I do consider myself successful. Okay. And there are moments where I don't. And that's just full transparency. Okay. Um, but I feel that in terms of what I just said, being in motion, um, staying in motion, I feel like, yes. You know, I would consider myself successful because I'm always working towards something greater than me. Okay. I'm always working towards that passion. I'm working towards, you know, accomplishing the vision. So for me, I would say yes. But there are going to be those moments where if you ask me on another day, I may say, oh, absolutely not today. <laughs> you know, sure, sure. Uh, that's full transparency. But um I do. And it's not it, for me. Success is not going to be always, like you said, relative to accomplishing this thing today. Mm -hmm. But it's where am I in the process? You know, am I doing something towards it every day? Right. To me, those are su success. D success includes successful habits. Right. So we have That's to great. have that discipline. You know, we have to be focused. We have to be committed. We have to be dedicated with whatever, whatever other adjectives you want to include, you know, but you want to make sure that you have some some very distinctive habits that will allow you to be successful. Although you may not have accomplished the goal, you're reaching that goal. You're reaching towards it. You're heading you know, in that direction. Forward. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So successful habits, we will see success in our lives. Okay. You'll see successful outcomes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Is there anything that you, you've given us so many takeaways already, but is there any, I'm just going to give you an opportunity if there's anything else you want to mention to our listeners especially those who might be, you know, try, you know, thinking about trying something new or something different with either their personal life or their, their career. Um, you know, they might want to switch careers, but they're nervous or they don't think what it, they have what it takes to, you know, make any type of major change in their life. Is there anything else you want to say to, uh, or is there anything you want to say to that person? Well, you know what? I would encourage that person to actually get up. I, I, I will speak um, strength to your will to do. Okay. Um, I'm going to speak fuel to your faith to accomplish and hope to your future. I say to you to dream again, to go and to accomplish and leave your mark on this world. The only thing that will stop you from accomplishing is you. And you have to figure out in life what it is you want to do. For so many years, I'll share this. I had a fear of success and a fear of failure. Okay. At the same time. Hmm. So you mentioned the word um, stagnant. And it kept me bound for okay. so long, right? Mm -hmm. Because I was afraid to move. I knew that the ideals that I feel the Lord had given me were great. And they were definitely something that um, would be measurable by what probably the world's definition of success is. 
but I was afraid to move in it. But then I was, I was also just kind of just stuck. And okay. so I feel that that happens so many times to people because of the unknown. We're, we, if, it's, if it's a path that we haven't walked and we're trailblazing and, and it's us, it's on us, right? It's on our shoulders. Okay. I feel that we want what's comfortable. We want what's common. We want what's known to us. We want, we want what's familiar. But I would encourage you to get out of that boat and to be a trailblazer of your own future and to be a trailblazer of your own journey. Awesome. Awesome. I love that you said um, you said that you really are your you didn't say it that way, but I'm I'm just sort of. (laughs) paraphrasing yeah. here that you're really your own competition you're your only competition mm-hmm. and you uh only you you know you you can be your only obstacle as well you know mm-hmm. um you know i love that i love that that we just need to sort of internalize that a little bit and and know that we can do anything we we set our mm-hmm. minds to do and but we can be our obstacle if we're not careful and we should yeah. really be our only competition just try to i always say try to be the the best you better than you were yeah. yesterday you know and just as you said continue with that attitude moving towards Towards, towards your goal. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so thing, much. Let me Go add ahead. one more thing to that, though. The other thing to look at, too, is as you're on your journey, a lot of times we're scared to build new relationships as well, because we're going to there will be a different level of people that you come into contact with as you're on this journey, right? That's why you can't be afraid when some relationships organically kind of dismiss. Okay. Um, where those appendages that maybe you don't need in this season, they can't grow with you. They can't go with you, right? Because okay. they may not fully understand everything about what you're called to do in this season. You have to be okay allowing those old appendages to just organically dissipate because you need to make capacity and room to have new folks in your life who are designed and called to be a helper to you in this season as you're trailblazing new territory. So for instance, there were so many things I didn't know about the business world, but there were people that I had to kind of just organically dissipate it was okay. You know, we you don't hate each other. It sure, just happened sure. because of the transition. So you will transition in your mindset and you'll also just transition in the capacity to receive others in your life um, who, who's been where you're trying to go. Absolutely. That's, that's great. That's great. How can people get in touch with you, Carolyn, if they want to, you know, you've just launched these, you've launched two businesses. How can they get in touch with you if they want to, you know, check out your businesses? All right. So find out what you're doing. Yeah. So my first business is up, you know, you can visit that at morek-african-connection.shop. You can also email me at morek.morke at yahoo.com. Can you spell that for us? Yes. Morek, M-O-R-K-E-H dash African, A-F-R-I-C-A-N dash connection, C-O-N-N-E-C-T-I-O-N dot shop is the store. Okay. And then my email is going to be my last name twice. So M-O-R-K-E-H dot M-O-R-K-E-H at Yahoo dot com. Now, my new store, we will have the information up because we'll start advertising on Wednesday. So if you're interested in being on that um, subscription list or the wait list for it, you can just email me at Morke dot Morke and we will add you and send you information about the new store. Okay, and that is for the BU company, that the business yes. that's dedicated to your mom's memory. Okay. Yes. Got mm-hmm. it. Thank you for sharing that information. Well, we're going we're going to wrap it up. My last question uh, is is a light one. So, um, okay. it is what is something, Carolyn, that you like or dislike that most people wouldn't know about you that you're willing to share publicly? Uh. <laughs> okay. So, well, this is something that I learned about me that I think is hilarious. Okay. So, <laughs> I ac- absolutely love canning and jarring. Really? And I can't believe it. I wish I had listened or, I don't know, been around, you know, our grandmother and, oh, my <laughs> and really goodness. observed that. But I love doing it. And it's something that is, it brings me solids. Um, you know, it. I awesome. feel at peace when I'm doing it. So it's something that I never even 
thought that I would like. But, you know, I went and got all my supplies and, you know, I'm still a baby canner. But I well, what have you canned so far? All right. So when I look at my shelves, I have my tomato sauce, of course, my spaghetti sauce. Um, I have this loaded bean recipe that I followed and it's so delicious. Uh, I have some collard greens over there. I have some ghee, you know, so I did the ghee butter as well. Um, Oh, you are seriously doing that. That's some beets. Some beets as well. That is awesome. Awesome. Just very random, but you know. That's well. It, it, that was the question. Something that most people wouldn't know about you. So that that was a that was a good answer. That was a good answer. Thank you so much, Carol. And many may not know um, who are listening that you are my family. You are yes. my cousin. Yes. And I just want to say before I let you go that I've watched your growth. Uh, both personally and professionally firsthand. And I'm so very proud of you and what you have accomplished. I want to thank you again, Carolyn, for your time, your transparency, and for those helpful takeaways you have given us that will help us to achieve personal success in our own lives. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.